All right, well right now, uh, I am in the city of Bastogne. And uh, for the past few days, we've been traveling in Germany and Belgium uh, with Andrew Biggio, who's the author of The Rifle, uh, along with four veterans of the Second World War. And uh, we just rolled up to the 101st Airborne Museum uh, right here in Bastogne. I've never been here before, uh, but I understand that it's like one of the best museums here in the area. So we're gonna go inside and uh, check it out see what we can see and see what we can learn. We're getting ready to go into the 101st Airborne Museum here in Bastogne, but first I wanted to show this spot. Now if you look at this building, you notice it has some pretty, uh, uh, I, I guess you would say uh, noticeable uh, features. You got like this brickwork uh, around the archway going into the door. Well there was a rather well-known individual who was here on the 17th of May in 1940 and had his picture taken right in this very spot. You might recognize him from the, uh, the, the, the funny mustache that he has on his face. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, Adolf Hitler was right here on the 17th of May, 1940. I uh, was here for propaganda purposes. Uh, he was here uh, visiting Rundstedt and uh, the, the headquarters that he had here. But anyway, yeah, that photo was taken right here, 17th of May, 1940. Okay, uh, we just got into the museum here and uh, right off the bat, super impressed. All kinds of cool relics and, and displays here that help you to kind of understand the, the battle, of, uh, battle of the Bulge in general and the Siege of Bastogne in particular. All right, so we're gonna take a look at, at some of the things that they have here in the museum. Here in the museum, they have this giant map that, that really kind of lays out what the Bastogne perimeter looked like and shows some of the, the different things that happened during the Siege of Bastogne. And uh, I really like how, how they've done this. Uh, so for example, here they show uh, the 10th Armored Division, uh, who was also here in Bastogne. Uh, the 101st gets a lot of the attention, but the, the 10th Armored uh, was here as well. So here you see Team O'Hara with their withdrawal. Uh, into Bastogne on the 19th of December, 1944. Uh, it, it also includes the German units who were in this area. So there's the advance of Panzer Lair uh, in this area. They also talk about Operation Repulse, which was the, uh, the, the resupply effort in the Bastogne area where they did a, a drop on the 23rd of uh, of December uh, and well there were some other dates as well but uh, anyway yeah here's another one showing Panzer Lair kind of bypassing Bastogne on their way to St. Hubert uh, you got the 26 Volks Grenadier Division uh, yeah all kinds of interesting stuff here that that really helps you to understand the battle and there we have the uh, arrival of the 101st Airborne there on the western side of Bastogne on the night of the 18th and 19th, uh, or into the 19th of December 1944. Yeah, really well done. Fox I, remember, I remember that one. When you were surrounded into the woods, yeah. it was just there. Oh. And we will go there on two Tuesdays. Oh, we will. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Take a picture of my own So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your division, you were coming from the south. You, you were ri riding truck from France, I think. Yeah. Uh, then we called yeah. 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 And you detrucked in front. We were in trucks. Yeah. Get off the truck. Get off the truck. Yeah. 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 We were good. Yeah. We were told no, no. to go attack a road junction over there. Yes. 
general direction not of bus not strike. Not in best, not in best. On the left. Yeah. And so you, you did track here. This is yeah, I've, I've, and so the, your, your regiment was the 347. I was right here, bud. Oh. And they were surrounded for days into the woods. Yeah. Because they move quickly, but the Germans have a very strong point here. And the Germans surround you into the woods. Yeah, yeah we were surrounded. Right? And they, they send you some mortar shells, I think. Oh. And yeah. for, for many days, I don't remember how many days, they were isolated behind the German lines. Yeah. And we will go there on Tuesday. Yeah. Is, is this all of Belgium? No, no, it's just a close up. You have Bastogne. Oh, okay. You have, you have the Bastogne perimeter. All right, in black. okay. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to show everything in this museum, but I'm going to just point out a few things. So here you can see this uh, 101st Airborne jump jacket uh, that, that looks like it has like a, a few little modifications to it. Uh, they also have an M1 Grand here to the right that was found in a river, which that's really interesting to me. Uh, down here, here's a helmet liner for the 502nd. Uh, parachute infantry regiment uh, so they had the, the heart shape uh, that was for the headquarters and then you, again you see a carbine there are just all kinds of different things here uh, here's one of the famous signs you can see it's been kind of uh, riddled with bullet holes um, they have some 105 millimeter artillery rounds I mean just all kinds of stuff here Here's a diorama depicting uh, General Patton and General McAuliffe. Uh, so General McAuliffe was the acting commander of the 101st during the Siege of Bastogne and when the Germans offered uh, or made an offer uh, to have the 101st Airborne surrender, well, McAuliffe is the one who uh, replied with the very famous uh, nuts. And then here you can see Patton awarding him the Distinguished Service Cross. Um, now, speaking of Patton, they have some things here in the museum that actually belong to George Patton. So here you can see this overcoat. Uh, they also have uh, some boots here and then uh, a few other items. Yeah, so that's pretty cool that they have some of his stuff here. All right, got another display of artifacts over here. Uh, so you can see there, there's a 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment uh, helmet uh, along with a reserve chute. they got some other things over here, some patches and some odds and ends. Uh, also have this package of Lucky Strike cigarettes, which was very popular. And uh, oh, also have some brass knuckles here. My, I just caught that. Uh, but here's what I really wanted to show right here. Uh, this is something that is called the receipt to Bastogne. And uh, you can see it says Memorandum Receipt uh, 8th Corps. And this was something uh, after, the, um, after the siege of Bastogne was over. They had a, a big ceremony in the middle of town. And uh, Troy Middleton, the uh, 8th Corps commander, was there. And also the 101st commander. Uh, Maxwell Taylor, and he had something worked up and had Middleton sign it that basically uh, was showing that they were turning Bastogne back over. Uh, we're going to have a, a episode of American Artifact later on that's going to go a little bit more in depth into this. Here at this museum, uh, you are going to see some of the most amazing dioramas that you will see anywhere. And uh, this one kind of goes back before the Battle of Bastogne, uh, or before the Siege of Bastogne and the Battle of the Bulge, uh, all the way back to September 2nd of 1944 at the German headquarters here in Bastogne. Uh, you can see that you know they've got some maps out they are kind of assessing the situation as the Americans are moving closer to this road junction where, where seven different roads are coming together. Uh, they also show back here 
like a member of the Belgian resistance who has brought been brought in and he's been roughed up just a little bit. So, so this is giving a, a little bit of context as to what was going on prior to the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, something else. You see this big banner here in the background. Uh, that banner was actually taken by Vincent Speranza, who was in the 101st Airborne, pretty well-known uh, veteran who, uh, you know, was, was very popular in his later years. Uh, he actually took this in Berchtesgaden, and the story is he uh, kicked down the, uh, the door to, um, to this home or, or to this building uh, where he saw this banner and the person inside, you know, said, don't shoot, don't shoot. And he said, I'm not going to shoot you. I just want that banner. So this was a, a war trophy that Vincent Speranza brought back, which is pretty dang cool. So the city of Bastogne was liberated on September the 10th of 1944 by the 28th Infantry Division. And uh, the Germans have been driven away. And here you can see this scene in this little cafe in town. And uh, you can see, you know, soldiers kind of fraternizing with the locals and maybe having uh, a few drinks. Um, the 28th is going to go on and fight in the Hurricane Forest, and then they'll end up back here uh, right before the Battle of the Bulge. Right now we are looking at a helmet from somebody who was in the 28th Infantry Division, uh, nicknamed the, the Bloody Bucket or the, the Keystone Division. This was a National Guard division that was originally from Pennsylvania. And they had just been chewed up in the Battle of Hurricane Forest and had been moved to this area for kind of like a, a rest and, and refit. And they were right here when the Battle of the Bulge broke out. A lot of people kind of forget about these guys, but they did a lot to hold off the Germans uh, while the, the 101st and the 10th Armored got up here. And uh, they have another diorama back here in this spot that shows a couple of 28th Infantry Division soldiers uh, on December 12th here in Bastogne at the Belgian military barracks, uh, which had been serving as the headquarters for uh, the 8th Corps commander, Troy Middleton. Uh, but anyway, they're here, and you can see, you know, they're with this uh, clergyman here having a cup of coffee, and uh, yeah, nobody is expecting any of the violence that is to come. Now, during the Siege of Bastogne, of course, these guys who were here were completely cut off, and the only way that they could be resupplied was by airdrop. So, uh, this little diorama here is showing uh, a, a guy that we've talked about before, uh, Jack Agnew, who was a member of the Filthy 13. Uh, he had to go up to the highest point in Bastogne near a brick factory, which we're actually going to go to in a later episode. And um, he was basically tasked with setting up a beacon so that the, uh, the supply drop could hit in the right spot. But anyway, yeah, they have a little diorama showing that. Here's kind of an interesting scene that they have set up. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, the depiction of a private by the name of Michael Lerner, who was in the 3rd Tank Battalion of Combat Command B of the 10th Armored Division. And uh, here he, he seems to be taking a moment to smoke this uh, exceptionally long pipe and talk with this Belgian policeman. And uh, you can see in the background, you know, they're in front of this hotel here in Bastogne. Well, this scene was inspired by this photo. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. All right, now, as you can see, uh, getting a, a little bit dark here. Uh, that's because we're, we're going down into a part of the museum that is being depicted as a cellar here in one of the homes in Bastogne.
So if you've ever been to the Gettysburg Museum of History and seen our exhibit, which is, is the Ghosts of the Ardennes, um, much of the material that's in that exhibit came from the owner of this museum. His name's Frank. We've been doing business for about 10 years or more, and um, he, he metal detected and dug and got items from locals in this area for decades. And, and if you look at this exhibit here with all the medical stuff and weapons and helmets and everything, this was our inspiration for the Ghost of the Ardennes exhibit at the Gettysburg Museum of History. And if you like that, I mean, this is the same exhibit times a hundred. They just have such amazing artifacts here, all from this area, mostly recovered by Frank and um, some of the other locals that, were, that have donated it. But, I mean, just look at this stuff, these helmets, these, these guns, these weapons, bullet struck, battle damage. Just amazing. Um, please come to this museum if you ever come to Bastogne. Now, as Eric was mentioning, this room really is incredible and really is a part of the, the history of the whole Ardennes area. Uh, so, as you can imagine, you know, one of the, the largest battles of the Second World War, uh, at least on the, the Western Front. Uh, is going to potentially leave behind a lot of material. So you can kind of think of this as almost like a, a modern day archaeology type thing since it's all happened, you know, in the past hundred years. So here, uh, you know, we're seeing all kinds of things. I'm, I'm seeing, um, you know, a Hitler youth knife. I'm seeing multiple German helmets. Uh, here again, as Eric was just pointing out, we have this machine gun. There are just so many items that were recovered from the battlefield. Uh, here we see like remnants of uh, a boot. Here we have a paratrooper's helmet that obviously has some battle damage to it. Huh. And all of these items you know, regardless of the condition that they're in, uh, they, they all tell a story. So getting out into this part, we, we start seeing more uh, like medical equipment. Here we see some religious items uh, and some dice. Yeah, this, this room really is fascinating. Look at all the stuff there. <laughs> They're recovered out of the fields and with holes in some of the helmets. Yeah, look at those. Yeah. Oh, there are many cases where, where a bullet would go in and, and spin around in the helmet and come back out. Something brought, else, isn't it? I brought home any number of those daggers. <laughs> On the blade of that dagger is the is the wording uh, "und blood und air," mm. <laughs> which means blood or honor. I brought home, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's a P38 there. I, I brought home, I brought home a P38 and a Luger. A lot of this stuff must have been covered, must have been uncovered out of the battlefield much later. Look at the condition of it. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. These are all battlefield relics that yeah. were recovered. Yeah, look at that. There's the old grease gun that we used. <laughs> very, very cheap uh, production item. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Gosh, I know that I keep saying this, but I just love all of the artifacts and relics that they have here in this museum, like this old water-cooled 30 caliber machine gun. Uh, my friend Reed Stevens actually operated one of those uh, in the 7th Armored. Uh, here we have a few more 
502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment helmets. Um, I haven't seen any 501st. Uh, here's another one that's a... I'm pretty sure that's a 506th right there. Uh, and then they also have a few German items in here. Uh, one of them that looks battle damaged. And then uh, also have one with a little bit of camo applied. I always like these painted helmets. But yeah, love this stuff. As we move into this room here in the, the basement or in the cellar, uh, they are showing a makeshift aid station and man, it is gruesome as heck as it would have been during the, the siege of Bastogne. Uh, so here they're, they're obviously showing, uh, you know, some medics working on a guy who has a severe leg wound. Uh, they're in the back. Uh, th this is actually depicting like a, a real place uh, at a, a home in Longchamp. Uh, so this is with the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment. Uh, they also show this African-American soldier back here from the 969th Field Artillery Battalion, and he's helping somebody from the 10th Armor Division who has been wounded uh, getting into this, uh, this aid station. Um, so... Yeah, man, this is impressive. I mean, and look at the detail. Here we have this soldier uh, holding a, a Bible and a, a rosary while a chaplain attends to him. Yeah, this is simply amazing. And then here's a, another diorama here in just the next room showing uh, paratroopers who are preparing themselves to defend this first aid station. We have some artillery flashes there in the background. And then you have this captain down here who is uh, calling in for artillery support. Wow. Here's another diorama that they have down here in the, in the cellar. And uh, looks like we have some soldiers who have burst into this cellar where some German soldiers have been holding out. Uh, looks like one of them has, has been killed right here at this table. My gosh, you just see like broken glass and you, you can broken mirrors and all kinds of, of chaos. Oh, and these guys aren't from the 101st Airborne Division. If you look at the shoulder patch, uh, these are guys from the 17th Airborne Division who would have been part of the, the relief of uh, the, the Siege of Bastogne. Uh, the, the 17th Airborne doesn't get nearly the recognition or credit that they deserve, uh, but yeah, it's their, their story is definitely worth looking into. And then here, uh, you see this soldier uh, running his bayonet into the abdomen of, uh, of this German soldier. Man, so impressive the, the work and, uh, and detail that has gone into this. Moving into another room here with a diorama where it's obviously pretty dark. Uh, one thing I really like about each one of these dioramas is that it's not just like relics and uniforms on display, they're telling a story. So this is supposed to depict the 463rd Field Artillery Battalion on Christmas night of 1944. And uh, yeah, here you can see the snow falling in in the background and uh, these guys are sitting here defending the perimeter 
uh, in Bastogne. All right, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, that museum was awesome. Uh, it, I, I love these places that are just uh, local and packed with relics and all kinds of things from the, from the battle that they kind of immerse you in the experience. And man, the dioramas in there are honestly some of the, the best that I've seen. So anyway, if you ever come to Best Known, uh, definitely come to this place because it's going to add to the overall experience and uh, help you learn a little bit more about uh, the Battle of the Bulge and the Siege of Bastogne.